mobile cloud service includes a JavaScript SDK and Cordova SDK that hybrid mobile applications and web applications can make use of to make the task of working with MCS remotely easier. In this episode, we're going to consider how to configure both of these SDKs in an Oracle Jet application. G'day, I'm Chris Muir. Thanks for joining us for this Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode. Right, for JavaScript platforms, MCS is bundled, as I said, with a JavaScript SDK and a Cordova SDK. Now, the JavaScript SDK is targeted for web application development. And yes, this does mean mobile cloud service is no longer just used in building mobile applications. It can be used in a multi-channel manner to support web applications too. Now, separate to the JavaScript SDK is the Cordova SDK. Now, in fact, these aren't separate at all. The Cordova SDK is a superset of the JavaScript SDK and is targeted to support hybrid mobile platforms that use Cordova with additional functionality specific to the Cordova platform. Which SDK you choose to use is simply a question of what you're building, a web app with JavaScript or a hybrid mobile app based on Cordova. Now, of interest to this MCS episode is Oracle Jet. Oracle Jet is a JavaScript toolkit that is capable of building both web applications and also hybrid mobile applications based on JavaScript and Cordova, depending on which platform you're choosing. As such, depending on the type of Jet application you're building, you just need to decide whether to use the MCS JavaScript SDK or the Cordova SDK. In order to set up an Oracle Jet application with the MCS SDKs, what we're going to do now is investigate all the steps required, as you can see here, needed to prepare your JET application. Now, to start out with, as we may have some Oracle JET programmers who have never seen Oracle MCS before, let's first describe the minimum MCS objects we'll need to support an Oracle JET application on the actual mobile cloud service site itself. When logged into MCS, as an MCS developer, we first need to create something called a mobile backend. The mobile backend works as a gatekeeper to the rest of the MCS services that the Jet application will consume. Of importance when creating the mobile backend is the settings page, where the base URL and associated keys will be used by the Oracle Jet application when calling MCS. Now, we'll show you how to configure these in the Oracle Jet application in a moment, but for now, just remember this settings page. Once done with the mobile backend, we create a client registration that models the client application that is calling MCS. If you're creating a JET web application, you create a client registration for web apps. If you're creating a JET hybrid mobile application running in Cordova, potentially you will end up at deployment time creating an iOS, Android, or Windows application. So you will need a client registration for each of these in MCS. This is required because if you use something like push notifications, each mobile vendor has their own push notification solution, such as Apple's push notification services or Google's cloud messaging service, which MCS will then talk to. So MCS requires a client registration for each. However, for demo purposes, if you're not using any of these mobile platform specific services, you can get away with just creating a web client registration and using that in both your Oracle Jet Web or hybrid mobile applications. Finally, for testing purposes, when your Oracle Jet application finally calls MCS via the SDK that we will talk about how to install soon, it is useful to have a mobile user to authenticate against too. So let's create a new user here too. Great, so now we're ready to start working with Oracle Jet itself. Now, if you're not familiar with Oracle Jet, you must first install the Jet tooling. Now, the steps to install these are covered in the Oracle Jet documentation in detail, as well as these two articles linked here. The first of which covers installing the Jet tooling for web applications, and the second covers installing the tooling for hybrid mobile application development. As summary, for web application development in Jet, you must first install Git and Node Package Manager on your development machine using the platform specific installers for these first. So that will be something different for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Then once these are installed via Node Package Manager, you install Yeoman, Grunt, Bower, and the Oracle Jet itself. 
Alternatively, if you choose to build hybrid mobile applications with Oracle Jet, you need to install Cordova via Node Package Manager as well. Then you must pick the mobile platforms you want to support and install the relating mobile development platform for that mobile platform. As such, for Android, that is the Android SDK available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. For iOS, that is Xcode available on Mac OS only. And for Windows Universal Apps, UWP, Visual Studio is what you need to install available on Windows only. Now, all of these are beyond the scope of this particular video. And I refer you again to the previous links, which covers the installation steps in detail. With Oracle Jet installed, you can now create the shell of a web application by Yeoman, calling the following command line. Yo, Oracle Jet, the name of your project, then dash dash template, and the particular template you want to use. In this case, I'm using Navbar. Or alternatively, if you're generating a hybrid mobile application, you can create a hybrid app using Jet by calling yo oracle jet colon hybrid, then the name of the project, and the name of the template, and finally dash dash platform and the platforms you want to support, in this case, Android. This generates the necessary scaffolding source code for your Jet app. Now, if we want to run the application, for both web and hybrid mobile applications, we can run them on our development machine by the browser as follows. We simply CD into the project, we then issue a grunt core, grunt serve, dash dash browser. Okay, so at this point you have a new JET application to work with, or maybe you even have an existing JET application, and now you want to add the MCS SDKs. Now, let's look at these steps to install the MCS SDKs in detail. First, you must download the MCS SDK itself. Now, when logged into MCS, the various SDKs for the different mobile platforms are available via the MCS landing page, then clicking on the Applications node, then the SDK Downloads link. Now, remember, as described before, if you're working on an Oracle Jet web application, you want the MCS JavaScript SDK. If you're building a mobile hybrid app, you want the MCS Cordova SDK. Now for this video, let's assume we're building a JET web application, so I'll download the JavaScript SDK. Be as it may, what we'll learn here is also applicable to applying the Cordova SDK. With the SDK downloaded, we then expand the zip, and within the SDK directory, we know, well, there's two files, mcs.js and mcs.min.js. The first is the full SDK, which can be used for debugging. The second is exactly the same SDK, but has been minimized to shrink the size of the file significantly for production purposes. Now, obviously, you pick the first if you're developing an application where you will be debugging, and the second for your finalized production ready application. Now, for the purposes of this video, we'll take MCS.js. Returning to our JET application source code, we then copy the mcs.js file into the source JavaScript directory alongside our main.js file. This will make the file available to our application to use. Next, we open the main.js file, which was generated by Yeoman from the Oracle JET scaffold or template, which represents the application's required JS bootstrap file for loading other modules and initializing them in our application. Within the required JS config, paths property, we must add the MCS library here as well. In this example, I'm going to put MCS as the handle and MCS as the actual JavaScript file to load. So this will load the MCS.js file and makes it available to your JET application with a handle of the same name. Note, we do not need to include the .js file extension when listing the files here. Alternatively, if we're using the minimized version of the MCS JavaScript SDK, we would put mcs.min here. Again, for this video, we're sticking with the mcs.js file. This is the non-minimized version of the MCS SDK. After this, we need to configure the MCS SDK so that it knows how to call our specific MCS instance. Now, we'll do this by calling the MCS SDK code passing in some configuration settings. Now you can place this initialization code anywhere inside your JET application, but an emerging pattern is instead to create a separate module to do this for you, which you just call once from your application controller. 
As such, I'll define a new file in csconfig.js to do this here. Now, within this file, as a first line via require JS define statement, I will load the MCS module, effectively the SDK, we just configured to point to the mcs.js file as a dependency for this module. Then, within the JavaScript function, we define an object to store the MCS configurations. Now, we can grab that structure from the SDK's Oracle Mobile Cloud config.json file and copy it into our code. Now, in remembering previously in the video, when I showed you the MCS mobile backend settings page, it is to this object we need to substitute the mobile backend values, including the base URL, the application key, and if we're using HTTP basic authentication, which I am in this example, the backend ID and anonymous token. Next in code, we need to initialize the MCS SDK with these settings, so we call the following. The first call tells MCS if we're running with a web or hybrid mobile application. The second call loads the config file for the SDK to initialize with. Now the config defines one mobile backend to work with, so through our mcsconfig.js file we make the backend freely available to other code to use. And for this application, as we're using basic authentication, we set this for the mobile backend. Having created the MCS config module file, we finally register it in the main JS file, and then the rest of the application can use it. Great, so that's actually all the steps. But to finalize the demo, let's add a simple button to the main index.html page for the app that when clicked, will behind the scenes call the MCS SDK to authenticate a user. And this will prove the whole mechanism is working. So, to the index.html page, I'll add the following code for a button, which will trigger a call to a login click JavaScript function. Then, in the app controller JS file for my Jet application, I'll add the login click JavaScript method. Next in this method, I want to start calling our MCS code. So first, I'll add the MCS config as one of the defined modules that is the dependency for this file. Then in code, in our function, I'll call the MCS config module, which, as we know, provides access to our mobile backend. And having accessed this, we'll access its authorization object, then the authenticate method to authenticate our mobile user. Now, I'll let you go and build a proper login page to get the user's account name and password. And I'm just going to cheat for this demo. And I'm going to hard code the user's name and password in code. In calling the authorization authenticate method, I also need to define the success and failure callbacks. And here, I'll just put some simple alert so we can see the outcome. Now, if we run our app, select the login button, we can see the successful login against MCS. If we look to the network window in our development tools within our browser, we can also see the authentication call go out to MCS. Voila, that's the job done. So, once you've configured your Jet application with the MCS client SDK, you're of course ready to call any of the provided platform APIs from MCS or your own custom APIs that you've built in MCS, assuming you've configured them all from the MCS side. No, no more difficult than that. Thanks for joining us. Good luck with your Jet and MCS adventures.